Anybody know? Yeah, somebody had it right. Jesus is all the world to me. Beautiful. I could only wish his message resonated in all of our hearts the way the song does. I'm glad you're here. Good to have Dale and Ann back after how many weeks, Ann? Six weeks. Where's she? Oh. You heard that, didn't you? Okay. Uh, Gene's looking at that same surgery, but uh, as Ann said, that's not the norm. Most uh, most kick back real quickly, and uh, but Gene's looking at that uh, same identical surgery. And while I'm talking about Gene, let me mention that his son is back in the hospital in uh, Gastonia with the same problems that he's had so many times over the last year, and that is uh, inflammation in the lungs, and he's had a rough time of it. Got a note to read, then I've got uh, someone to recognize. Dear church family, Dale and I want to thank you all so very much for your prayers, foremost, but also for the cards, calls, and visits. Thank the ladies from the Sunday school class that brought wonderful meals. This has been a real trying time, but Dale is, is making real improvements, still has pain. Praise God, he's much improved. Thanks again for all your love and care, love in Christ. Uh, Dale and Ann, and we are so glad that uh, that Dale is back and Ann, and then um, Jack. Jack wanted to share a word this morning before we pray. Jack, Jack's aunt and uncle in Richmond and uh, Virginia had no children, so had Bob and Ann, Bobby and Jack and Fran not stepped up and, and uh, helped as they did, uh, I don't know what would, ha would have happened. Bear with me a moment of prayer before we can sing. I'm praying this morning the Holy Spirit would speak to my heart, <coughs> speak to your heart. There's no time that as God's people we should be more conscious. And when we come to observe the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. My fear every time we come to this, we'll just go through the motions. It will be no more than a ritual. The gospel account of his crucifixion upon the cross, his suffering. It'd be good this afternoon you take time and just sit down alone and just open the gospels. Read how much he loved us. 
very easy for me sometimes to say, Lord Jesus, I love you. But the question that comes to my mind about myself, do I show it? Lord Jesus, we thank you that your sacrifice upon Calvary's cross would be here this morning. We're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, as, as Peter said. Redeemed with the precious, precious blood of Jesus. I always think about that great old gospel song, Father, when I come to a time like this, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And then alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, and the burden of my soul was washed away. And so I pray, Heavenly Father, this morning that you would permit the Holy Spirit of God to speak to our hearts. This will be more than just some normal service. It'll be much more than some type of ritual that we would go through once a quarter in the Baptist church. It'll be a time when we see Jesus as we've never seen Jesus. It'll be a time when we commit to Jesus as we've never committed to Jesus before. Walk in his ways, not in our ways. We see him not only as Savior this morning, but more importantly for us, maybe we see him as Lord. We sing that song sometimes, he's Lord, he's Lord. He's risen from the dead and he is Lord. But I pray that would be more than a little course for us this morning. I pray that in reality, we shall turn away from self. We shall make you truly the Lord of our lives, and I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. mentioned a couple of other things in the web prayer request. We're going to have prayer time at the end of our service this morning, but uh, Mr. Larry came home Wednesday. That was certainly a blessing, a miracle from God. He's so happy to be there. Miss Margie is scheduled to go to Westminster um, on this coming Wednesday, and I know that you want to keep her and her family um, in your prayers. Miss... Uh, Looking down here uh, real quickly, uh, Pim and Nail are not doing well, particularly her, and so we want to remember them this morning in prayer. Uh, Howard uh, Nancy have been out now for two weeks. He's having some bron bronchitis problems. Father, I lift these as well as I lift all the other names on this prayer list to you this morning. It seems that in the last few weeks, constantly made, made aware of some in our family, church family, as well as some who are friends of myself, as well as some of our other members. Some are going through rather trying times, Father. I saw that rainbow this morning. In fact, Father, you, you let me see two of them. It's very unusual this time of, time of morning that we, were, we saw those rainbows. I know what they, I, I know when you gave the rainbow, you gave it uh, uh, after the flood, and you, you said, I'll never destroy the earth again, and I'm going to give you this rainbow as a promise. 
Father, to me, that rainbow represents a lot more than just the fact that you'll not, you'll not cover the earth again with water. To me, this morning, as I saw those rainbows, it represented to me every single promise that you ever made in your book. And you'll keep all of those promises as surely as you keep that promise that you made to Noah. That keeps us going, Father. To know that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. To know there's nothing in all the world, nothing in heaven, nothing on earth, nothing under the earth that can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I don't know about the rest of the folks this morning, Father, but I know for me, it is those promises, and those are just a few of them, countless numbers from Genesis to Revelation. You have never, ever, ever broken a single promise you made to mankind, nor will you ever break a promise. And so, Father, when things go dark, and they're difficult, and sometimes we don't know which way to turn. That's all of us. We can turn back to your word. We can say, but God made this promise to me, and he's a promise keeper. Father, we don't have anything else this morning. If all of a sudden we were devoid of every material possession that we now possess, the fact that we have you, the fact that we have your promises. And I pray that we shall think this morning as we have never thought before about how much you truly love us. We're glad to hear this morning not just saying Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. I pray that that will become more than a hymn to us this morning. I pray it will become the reality of our hearts. As we realize there is only one way and one way alone to truly experience joy and peace. And that's so allow you to be Lord and Master of our lives. And I pray this morning as we leave this place, you'll be a greater Lord and a greater Master over us. Because of a commitment that we make to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
me ask the deacons who will be sharing the Lord's Supper this morning come and sit over on this side for me. Andy and Bob. And That song, I pray, was more than a song. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. So I'm going to ask you to bow your head for a moment. The world at large has one foot in hell and the other on a banana peel. Is slipping and sliding into hell way too fast. The only gospel they'll ever read or hear or see. They'll not see it in the church because they don't attend anymore. If they see the gospel, if they see Jesus, it's because they see Jesus in us. It's serious business, folks. Never been more serious is today. In a county that's one of the fastest growing in the entire nation, I heard just the other day. Fastest growing county in the state of South Carolina, if I'm not, if I'm right. See, the first or second. I heard the other day it's the eighth fastest growing county in the entire United States. People are coming into our county much faster than they're coming into our churches. My prayer is this morning that we'll not just take these elements that represent the body and blood of Jesus. We'll take Jesus far more seriously. It'll never happen until we examine ourselves as Paul encouraged Corinthian Christians to do. In a moment, we're going to have a responsive reading. Consider it very carefully. We hear this morning, fathers, your children. I don't know when the fact that I'm your child has gripped my soul in more than in recent weeks. You're my father. I'm your child. That ought to cause every saint of God to shout glory, hallelujah, many, many times. Thank you for that. We come this morning to commemorate your death, Lord Jesus, upon the cross. No man could ever imagine the untold suffering that you endured before you ever got to the cross. Gethsemane alone, Father, was far was far greater suffering than we ever suffer. And then Pilate's judgment hall. And then being carried through the streets of Jerusalem, or you carrying your cross through the streets, falling under the weight of it. And then coming to Golgotha. And having the nails driven through your hands and feet. Have men to taunt you. Mock you. Not because you deserved it. And because you'd committed any sin. But because you loved us that much. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life. (laughs) You didn't lay it down for your friends. You laid it down for us sinners. And so, Holy Spirit, if all we do this morning is go through these motions again, as some of us have done for many, many years, if we don't come to the reality of your suffering, reality of our need to commit ourselves as we've never been committed to you before. 
this hour will have been spent in vain. I pray it will not be that way. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way in my life this morning. I leave you not the same person I was when I came in. I want to love you with all my heart. I want to honor you with my life. I truly want to be a Christian. Not just in word, but a Christian in deed. And so we wait upon you. A lot of stuff running through our minds at the moment. We're thinking about what we're going to do this afternoon. We're thinking about what we're going to eat when we get home. I beg you to help us think about Jesus in a different way. Jesus is all the world to me. He's my life, my joy, my all. That's a beautiful song. May its message ring so clearly in our hearts and minds that we will be able to say, He is my all. He is my all. It's in His name I pray. Amen. We're going to have a responsive reading. <clears throat> if you look at your bulletins, and I think it may be on the screen. <clears throat> The Apostle Paul wasn't Paul's idea, it wasn't some opinion that Paul had. That Paul says, I received of the Lord. God spoke to him. God delivered him a message. The same the message that God delivers to us through the Holy Spirit and through the inspired writings of Paul. I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus. The same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it a second time in remembrance of me. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. I pray those words will penetrate your heart. It's not let a man examine someone else's heart, but his own heart. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. serious moment Paul said to the Corinthians there are some who are sickly among you Paul said some have even died because they ate or drank of that unworthily and Paul said they drink damnation to themselves let a man examine himself. Let Ray Long examine himself. Not Ray Long examine the deacons. Or the deacons examine Ray Long. Or Ray Long examine the congregation. Or the congregation examine Ray Long. But that every man let every woman. This is serious. 
examine himself. If there were ever a time when God's people need to walk out of God's house a new people, a renewed people, a more committed people, it is when we have partaken of that which is so precious, that which represents the body and blood of Jesus. It's the only thing that Jesus ever asked us to do in remembrance of him. That adds significance to it in my mind, my way of thinking. Thank you for salvation, Heavenly Father. Thank you that you looked at sinful man. You knew his plight. You knew his end. When you planned before the very foundations of the world were laid, you, you planned then. <laughs> Not after man had sinned, but before, because you knew what man would do. And you planned then. I'm not going to let him go without sending him a Savior. And you did. Remember the words of the angels to the shepherds on the Judean hillside. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. A Savior which is Christ the Lord. We followed you through the pages of your book, the Bible. We listened as Matthew and Mark and Luke and John recorded the various events of your life. You knew all along where it would end on the cross. I thank you that I have that constant reminder in my pocket this morning of that cross. Because every time I reach inside my pocket, I feel and sometimes bring out that little cross, hold it in my hands to remind me. Not all of us may carry such reminder, Father. But I pray that every day that we live as children of God, that the Holy Spirit of God would in a very special and unique way remind us the promise, Father, you made before the beginning of time. Thank you for that rainbow this morning that once again reminded me of the promises of God. And we come to this service this morning to yield ourselves anew to you to commit ourselves in a way that maybe we've not previously committed ourselves, to walk in your paths, to walk in your ways. And all of this I pray in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Being read for us this morning, the story of the Passover, a part of the story of the Passover, not the entire story. You see, this upper room was for the purpose of their... Celebrating the Passover. It's interesting. I've gone back and forth this week. My own reading, praying, and thinking. They celebrated. Do you know what? They still celebrate. After all of these years, the Jewish race still celebrates Passover because it meant so much was so meaningful to them. You see, their, their salvation was of a physical nature. You see, again, we go back to the promise. God had said, you go to Egypt, and you'll stay there, you'll suffer. God said, uh, <laughs> one day I'll, I'll redeem you. So after all of these years, the Jewish people still gather and they, they still celebrate that, that redemption, that salvation, that, uh, that bringing them out. After all of these years, they still celebrate. Hear me well this morning. <laughs> you
you and I have much more to celebrate than did the Jewish race. They celebrated the physical going out. We celebrate here this morning a spiritual going out. Because God has saved us. By his blood. He shed on Calvary. He saved us. We're children of God. I think I told you a few weeks ago it took hold of me more than I think it's ever taken when, when, I, when I realized that God is my father. I am his child. God is my father and I am the child of God. Not of my own doings. But we're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but we're redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Well, somebody doesn't hit it again. Amen. And amen. I'm a blood bought child of holy God. That's more important than anything else in this world. So we come this morning. Jesus had celebrated the uh, Passover. And you remember, any of you ever been to the foot washing service? Anybody? Well, a, a few radicals. <laughs> Our free will Baptist friends still still do that, whether you know that or not. They still have foot washing. I, I've done that once or twice in my years in the ministry. I started to do it uh, today, but I had not notified these guys ahead of time to be sure they'd wash their feet this morning. Jesus said, here's the example to follow. And then they shared the Passover meal. And then Jesus said, there's something else we want to do this morning or this evening. Jesus said, I'm going to institute something that's new, something I want you to continue to do it in remembrance of me. And Jesus took bread and blessed it. He broke it. And he handed it to those disciples and said, this is my body. My body. This represents me. It represents my body. They still didn't understand it. It took them a while. And I hope you understand this morning. This bread that you take this morning. It represents the broken, bleeding, suffering body of Jesus. And then he took a glass of wine. Didn't have a little cup such as we use today, but a cup. He said, this is represents my blood which I am about to shed for you. They pass a cup around. Other, in a few moments, many of us are going to do what we have done <laughs> some of us 50, 60 years. For many of us it's become so, so commonplace that we just do it. We fail to stop and realize what we're doing. But this morning, this morning, Father, I 
pray you'd let your Holy Spirit just speak. Speak to my heart. I realize this. I've never realized how precious, 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 precious is the body of Jesus and how precious is that blood. I can still hear Andre Kraut say, great singer, gospel song, the blood will never lose its power. I'm glad this morning that that blood can touch and cleanse somebody who hasn't been cleansed. But also realize that blood, Jesus' blood, cleansed me one day from all of my sins. Washed away my sins. Hallelujah. Washed away my sins. I pray that those of us who are saved will come to a new understanding of what the blood means. I reminded myself, I think every day this past week, Father, that old song, when I see the blood, I will pass. I will pass away. And so, Father, in judgment one day, not too long from now. Same story. Being read from us from Exodus. When the angel passed over that night, he looked and he saw that blood or that animal on the doorpost. He passed on over. Where the blood wasn't seen, the death angel stopped. Father in heaven, I thank you that one day you're going to pass over. Not the angel, but you. And whenever you see that soul that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you're going to say, enter into the joy of the Lord. But that soul that has not been washed and cleansed in the blood, you'll say, depart ye cursed into everlasting fire. For I never knew you. God, if there's someone in that plight, as Thomas so well explained last Sunday, I pray this morning, they'll let Jesus wash them. Wash them in the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name. Our deacons will come, and Brother Bob will come and help me remove the table. On the night before our Lord was crucified at the conclusion of the feast of the Passover, which he and his disciples were celebrating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and gave to his disciples and said, This is my body, which is given for you.
this represents the body of Jesus. Scripture says this is the bread which came down out of heaven. Not as the fathers ate and died, but he that eateth this bread or partakes of Jesus in the pardon and forgiveness of sin shall never, ever, ever die. Again, Lord Jesus, because we can never say enough, thank you. Thinking today, Father, that we're, we're about to enter into the season that we call Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Football games, and family gatherings, and decorations. Also trivial. Give us. Because the thing for which we have to be the most thankful in all of the world is the body of Jesus. And this morning as we partake of these elements, of this element that represents your body, we just simply lift our hands to you. We simply say, thank you. Not one time, many times. Because had you not loved us as dearly as you loved us and come from heaven to earth as you came and suffered in your body as you suffered, we wouldn't be here this morning, Father. I don't know where we'd be if not here. So forgive us if we go day by day and just enjoy your blessings. Enjoy the food that you give us, the cars we drive, the clothes we wear, the homes we live in. We go through those matters and never pause in the course of any day. Not just Thanksgiving. Any day without saying a great, great big hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Same night our Lord took the uh, cup and he gave to his disciples and he said, this is my body, this is my blood. This is my blood. This, this represents, Jesus said, what I'm about to do for you. I'm about to shed my blood for you.
verse I have previously referenced this morning. We're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold. There's not enough money in all the world to buy a soul. And what shall a man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Money can't buy it. We're not redeemed with it. We are redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray this morning that as we have partaken of these elements that again represent your body and your blood, I pray that for all of us it's not just been the norm, the thing that we do once a quarter, not just some kind of ritual ceremony that we go through, but I pray it's been a time when we've come face to face with you our relationship to you. Search me, O God, I pray, and know me and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. I pray as we walk out of here this morning, we won't be the same people. Father, if you ever needed a holy people, you need that holy people today. If you ever needed men and women to walk in light and not in darkness, it's today. Ever had ever a time when men needed to hold high the banner of the cross, it's today. If there's ever a time when men needed to not be ashamed of Jesus, it's today. If ever there were a time when we needed to lift holy hands to a holy God, it's today. I want to be that man who lives holy hands. I want to be that man who lives like a Christian. I want to be a man who walks in the light and not in the darkness. Thank you for our church. There's a lost world out there. There's a lost community. They're on the way to hell. I pray that we'd be like Jesus when he, when he viewed, the, viewed the masses, his move with compassion. May we care enough about our family, about our friends, about our neighbors, that what we have experienced today, we we'll want them to experience likewise. Thank you for our deacons. I pray a special blessing upon them. I pray for our shut-ins who we'll be visiting with in a few weeks and sharing this same message. And I pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may let me see them. Over the next couple of weeks, our uh, deacons will be going into the homes of our shut-ins, those who are not privileged to be able to come and share as we did this morning, the Lord's Supper. We go to their homes. We did this some months ago, and, and it was such a blessing to them that we would come to them since they cannot come with us. And so pray for us as we go into the homes and we share, and we share the same message. We share the, that which represents the body and blood of Jesus. Folks, if the world ever needed to see Jesus, it's today. Ever. It's up to us. Any sin in your life? We discussed this Wednesday, this past Wednesday night. <laughs> if you don't go out and get drunk, don't carouse on Saturday nights, don't curse a lot, you're a pretty good person. I tell you what's killing the church, and I said this Wednesday night. The unbrotherly, unchristian attitude that some of God's people have to each other. One man sinned in the Old Testament. His name was, uh, what was his name? He was Achan. Oh, his name was Achan. One man brought down God's judgment on a whole nation. 
that you know one person can bring down God's judgment on, on a church. Don't be that one person. Please don't. Let me give you one more prayer request. I should have done it earlier. On the prayer list for some weeks now, there's been the name of Tom Patterson, who's pastor at East, East Woodhaven Baptist Church in Rock Hill off Mount Gallup Road. Tom's wife was in the hospital for quite a few weeks at the point of death more than one time. She came home last Monday from the hospital. Their 50-year-old son died unexpectedly on Monday. And his funeral will be Monday at the Woodhaven Baptist Church. That family needs your prayers. I'm going to pray, and Greg's going to come lead us in a closing song. Uh, no, we're going to, I know there was something. When you get old, you have to make notes. As I pray, I want you to take the hand of the person beside you. You probably know the name of that person. You may not do this as we pray. I have sensed more hurting among people the last few weeks. I don't think there's a day goes by that my phone doesn't ring. or I meet somebody and they say, Brother Ray, let me tell you about this person, that person who's suffering. Drove me to the book of Job this week. It really, it really did. It drove me to Job. So much pain, hurt, suffering. You don't know what the person beside you may be going through. They may not know what you're going through. You may know them, you may not know them. If you know their name, would you just pray a prayer for them? God bless them. If you know what something they're going through, pray God will help them. I pray God will make them stronger this week because they came here today. Father, we're a family. <laughs> Not just a congregation. We're family. And Paul said when, when one weeps and everybody should weep with them, when one laughs and rejoices, we should all laugh and rejoice because we're family. I looked at over this congregation this morning. I see the faces of some people that I know what they're going through, the pain, family problems, physical problems, mental problems. I pray for them this morning. Help us to be helping hands. Help us to be healing hands to those that are around us this morning. If somebody got a special burden, let us share it. If there's someone without Jesus today, I pray the Spirit of God's been so real that they'll say, Pastor, I want to know this Jesus you've spoken of this morning, this Jesus who loved me enough to suffer, bleed, and die for me upon Calvary's cross. May we truly be family, Father, not just a group of people, not just a, quote, congregation, but a loving, caring, compassionate family. Lord, when we love the way you loved us, the world will see it, they'll hear about it, they'll beat a path to our door because the world too is hurting. They need love. May we be that example of godly love in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me as we sing our...